little while ago somebody told me about this. They sent me a link to this whole thing and, I, and I've been kind of trying to digest this and what does this mean exactly. And um, I'm going to play some things here. This thing of Donald Trump getting rid of 501c3. I'm going to show you why it's actually a very, very dangerous thing. Let's play a little bit of this. I probably had 50 of the ministers and pastors, different folks, came up to my office. And they're really under tremendous pressure because they don't want to have their tax exempt status taken away. Yeah. This happened during the Lyndon Johnson presidency. Yeah. And I said, why is it that you folks are pushed around so much? Christianity. Right. These are the pastors. And these are strong people. These are really strong people. Why do you allow them? Why aren't you more forceful? And finally, somebody said, well, we have to be a little careful of our tax exempt status. I said, when did that happen, actually? It was during the Johnson. Well, we're going to try getting rid of that, OK? Because that's really terrible. We're going to try getting rid of it. And I've said that to I've said that to a lot of evangelicals, a lot of great Christians. We're going to try getting rid of it. Because it's taken. it sort of means that somebody walking down the street has more power than somebody of religion, of, of our religion, of Christianity, somebody that's an evangelical, you take anybody, they have more power because these people are powerless. They've actually taken their right of free speech away. That's right. So I said, we're going to try and get rid of that, and I think we'll be very, very successful. You know, it's interesting. I said, how many Christians are there? Because, you know, we got men, we got women. You cut it in half, we actually have a few more women. But we have far more Christians than we have men or women. So in a way, it's the most powerful lobby. It's the biggest group of people. But we're not allowed, they're not allowed to talk because they're petrified. You saw what was happening with the IRS and you saw what was taking place with regard to certain groups. So we are going to try, and, and usually when I say try, that means I'm going to get it done. So we are going to try very hard, we're going to get that brought back. And I think it's going to be very hard to counter it because if the Christians and if the, look, if the whole evangelical Christian sector gets together, nobody, nobody can be. You know when I... Okay. Now let's go here and let's hear from uh, Mike Pence. See what he has to say about this. The Constitution should step forward and heed the call to action. I joined Donald Trump on the Republican ticket because I believe he has the right leadership and the right vision to make America great again. President Donald Trump will appoint justices to the Supreme Court who will uphold our Constitution and the rights of the unborn. Donald Trump will also sign into law legislation that will free up the voices of faith all across this country by repealing what's come to be known as the Johnson Amendment. The Johnson Amendment's literally been on the books since the 1950s and it essentially threatens tax-exempt organizations and churches with losing their tax status if they speak out on important issues facing the nation from the pulpit. Donald Trump and I are both committed to work with re renewed Republican majorities in the House and the Senate to repeal the Johnson Amendment once and for all. You know, the truth is that a, a careful study of American history has shown that the strength of our nation has come from our communities of faith. Throughout our history, it's been the voices of faith that more often than not have driven our nation to a more perfect union. It was the pulpits uh, around the American founding that thundered against the tyranny of King George. It was the pulpits around America that spoke of the evils of slavery and brought an end to the scourge of slavery in America, even through a great civil conflict. And it was voices of faith and communities of faith that transformed our nation through the civil rights movement uh, in our own lifetime, and we're a better nation for it. The choice today for all of us, though, could not be more clear. I've never seen a more dramatic choice in a national election in my lifetime. I truly do believe we're, we're come to a time for choosing. Okay. Heard enough. Um, now, here's the issue. Okay, uh, this whole thing of 501c3. Go back before 501c3. What did you have? Well, churches, uh, you know, and they had the church building thing. I mean, you know, house church Christians have never had any problems. You know, if the government comes in and says, "Hey, you need our permission to do this," we just go, "Whatever." We keep just doing our thing. Um, but church buildings. They seek for legitimacy. They want to be legal and everything else. And of course, uh, the purpose of 501c3 when it came in was primarily greed on the part of professing Christians. Why? Well, because they want to give money. They give their tithe to their corporation there, their church, but they want to be able to write it off on their taxes. 
those charitable contributions. And so they said, okay, well, how can we do this and not, you know, make problems and whatever else? So they, uh, Johnson came out with the thing of creating this IRS code 501c3. And basically, they didn't even need it. You could give money and stuff like that. And if you're crooked enough to write it off, you could do that. So, but see, they, they put people under this yoke of 501c3. And basically what the government got is they got the control of the churches. You were not allowed to tell people who to vote for or influence major points of public policy from the pulpit when you have 501c3 church. And the federal government owns the building. That's the other thing. So you say, well, this is a good thing that these guys are going to get rid of it. But uh, when you look at the policies of these men, they're appointing Catholics, and not just Catholics, Jesuits, right and left. Donald Trump is a Fordham graduate, okay, graduated from Fordham University, it's a Jesuit school. His children go to Jesuit schools, okay. I, the guy is a Catholic, right? Oh, he's a Presbyterian, though. He's a Presbyterian, yeah. Okay, he's a trained Catholic. You know, he goes and he's, he's talked about, uh, you know, ending anti-Catholic bigotry and and, you know, we're going to fight for American Catholics and we're going to stop the persecution that you're under and things from the government. Okay. Um, it's in the last video I did. You know, and Mike Pence is a evangelical Catholic. So just think about this, how they could do this. They repeal 501c3. Now the churches can openly promote government programs. What if the... Uh, government starts to push Roman Catholicism as the state religion. That's what's going to happen. You know why? Because that's what the Bible says would happen. Right? Roman Catholicism is the religion of the end times. And we'll be doing some a study on that coming up. A uh, very detailed study. Lord's been showing me a lot of things on this whole this whole issue. But they can bring in. First you muzzle the churches and then you pull the muzzle off and say, okay, now you can speak, but you're going to do what we tell you to do. Help us push our agenda through. Now that the Jesuits have infiltrated all the Protestant you know, denominations out there. See? You had to silence them back in the 1960s, early 1960s when the whole thing went in, because there were still some King James Bible-believing people, or you know, men out there preaching. So you got to silence them. But now that the whole professing church is totally gone, totally apostate. Uh, you can swing it back to Catholicism, being very promotional of Catholicism. That's what's going on here. I mean, this is something we're going to have to pray about as Christians. We're going to have to keep our eyes open and see what's going on with this whole thing. But I don't see this as a good thing. In other words, you say, well, how are they going to do this as far as they'll repeal 501c3? Well, how are they going to do it with the tax exempt stuff and whatever else? I don't know how they're going to do the whole thing of, you know, making it still legal that people can write off their giving and things like this, which to me is just extreme, being extremely crooked. I don't agree at all with that. I've always told people if you give to this ministry, it's a gift. Um, don't write it off on your taxes. That's that's wrong. I mean, it's like, you know, you put money in the offering plate and you run around to the back of the church there and you take 20 bucks out. Put a hundred dollar bill and take a twenty dollar bill out. You say, "Well, I want something back." You know, you're not giving money then to the Lord's work. So, uh, just very interesting um, what's going on here. I think that we're looking at um, church and state being joined uh, under the Trump-Pence um, regime. Uh, very dangerous.